Hi, I'm TJ Schwanke. Today on Outdoor Quest TV, Vanessa and I head to Namibia to hunt Plains game with our old friend, Bootnell. Welcome to Outdoor Quest TV. Now celebrating our 10th season. So here you're taking me into your favorite warthog spot. <laughs> we visited the spot yesterday and we come here a little bit late yeah. to the spot. So I suggest we come here this morning or this today at lunchtime. I think it'll be a good good spot to get the warthog. Yeah. It's a total open area, it's totally quiet, there's no cattle, nothing in this area here. Oh, it's so pretty, we did sneak in there a little bit yesterday, and we did see a, a few pigs, and um, That's right. we saw some hearted beasts, so yeah. get there in a little earlier, like they say today, and hopefully see more. I, I, just, I hope you're going to be successful today. Yeah, well, it's kind of neat, because you really have to sneak into that spot, don't you? That's right, because there's always game there. Yeah. Huh? There's a big, big thing that there's always game, 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 some game down there. Yeah. And you've got a real opportunity to get something there anyway. Yeah, and you can probably I, see just about anything here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Well, I'm ready for a good sit this <laughs> afternoon anyways. Good luck, man. Let's go. <laughs> we made it. Outdoor Quest is brought to you by Alberta Conservation Association, conserving Alberta's wild side. Proas Hunting Apparel, serious huntwear for real women. Zeiss Optics, we make it visible. Remington Clothing, Remington Stalker Height, the most effective hunting systems anywhere. Argo, the world leader in amphibious vehicles. Explore the possibilities.
a boar. It's a male. It looks like a good boar, but it's still dying to grass. A little bit, wait a little bit. here and we came to this water hole oh maybe an hour ago and we snuck in and there was probably 15 or 16 warthogs here already and they just kept coming and coming and coming and there was a gemsbok and two, two gemsbok and a hartebeest bedded here we snuck in perfectly we were you know only 100 yards from everything but we got in really good so can't wait to see them let's go check it out well boot they're not going to win any beauty prizes are they <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really a nice big old hog man that was an awesome day. We saw about, what, 25 hogs today? Yeah, 25 plus hogs here. Yeah, it was kind of neat. We came in, uh, well, the grass is so tall right now, it's almost impossible to spot and stalk these, isn't it? Yeah, outside, you can forget about it. You have to go into the water places to see what they come into the water, draw into the water places. It's the only place you're going to observe them. Yeah. Because outside, you just see the grass moving, maybe you see a tail. There's no way to observe the tusk. Right. So it's the best way to get them now in this stage is coming to the open plants and stuff. Well, it's kind of neat. We um, we stuck into this spot and there was two gemsbok and a heart of beast and about 15 or 16 warthogs. And we snuck in perfectly, got in the blind, and nobody knew we were here. No, no. And it woke up. This old guy he coming in, uh, you immediately see when they coming in, like I said to you, he's a shooter. Yeah. Uh, he was the biggest boar coming into the day anyway, but nice old dog coming in. And you put him down. It was good to put him down. Yeah, well, I was happy with that. And uh, so that's, is that the difference between the males and the females is the two warts? Yeah, the, the females got only two warts, the bottom bottom ones. And these ones here are the... And the males got the four ones. The plus two in the bottom also, and the, the top also. Okay. But it's really a nice size hog. It's good time now of the year. They're in good condition. Yeah. It's a good size hog. Your skin's so tough and like leather, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, it was really neat just watching them all interact today and you could watch the young ones fighting and... I think it was nice to sitting down there and see so much game coming in oh, there anyway. Was, I had to observe them first and see them, what's going on. And even afterwards you shot it, there was still some hawks coming in also and the hardy bears coming in also. So, you know, this place is a good place here for, for, for game. Like I said to you also, this wild game is open area. Yeah. It's open roaming game. And it's nice to, to be in a place like spot to see so much game together on one spot. Yeah. Boy, those bottom tusks could do some damage, couldn't they? That's the knives. That's the blades that they're cutting with. The wow. top ones, you will see always they are either left or right-handed. This one on the left hand yep. a little bit worn down. Okay. It's typical, they dig more of the left-hand side, and they are either left or right-handed, and the bottom ones they use for fighting. Oh, no kidding. But well done. Good shot, man. Well, thank you so much. This has been so much fun so far. and we're, Delicious, DJ. We're, this is only, what, day four so far? Yeah. <laughs> We've got ten more days of this. And I'm looking forward to it. But thank you so much. And you got a great staff and a great camp and a great area. Thank you very much. It's good to have you guys here. Let's get to the truck, get this guy loaded. And yeah. I think there might be a cootie with my name on it yet tonight. Yeah. And we have to find him. <laughs> okay, Vanessa. We spot three games from, the, from up here. Okay. That right down there. It looks like there's one that's reasonable. Look like a good one, yeah. worth going for. So we had to go down here. But the, the problem is the push in the grass is very high in this area. So most probably you only see the back line of the game spot. Okay. We had to maneuver to get to a place, place where you're gonna have a clear shot. So stay low, follow me. It looks like a good animal. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay.
You can take him. You can take him. Come here, Paulus. Come here, Paulus. Paulus. Well, that was quite the stock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's early morning stock. It, it worked out very well. Um, it's an old bull, it's an old mature bull. But I think it's a good way for you to see how strong and how tough these animals actually. Oh, yeah. They can take some hammering. Yeah. And the Gensburg is standing out to one of the toughest ones yeah. in our area here. Uh, the stock was good, they spotted it, we, we stopped in on it. We got reasonable close, I think, as well as open area, we got about 130, 140 yards away. Right. Uh, on the sticks. The only uh, problem was there's that the first time we were set up on the sticks, there was that heart of beast. It was right in behind him. That's right. Right behind him. Yeah. And uh, that heart of beast took off, and he was kind of like, what the heck? Yeah. And on the left side there was a cow, and she had actually got us. Oh, because I didn't yeah. see her at all. I was so concentrated yeah. on him. <laughs> she saw, and that's why when when we when we look at the binoculars, I was start moving a little bit to this guy. He was facing like this, that he can turn around, look at us. Right. Because then he saw movement and stuff, and he detected that. That gives you the opportunity to shoot it. Yeah. But at your shot also, you shot it right behind the shoulder. Yeah. A little bit of an angle backwards. He going down. Yeah. But they coming up again, so he was hit hard. And also after the shot, he going about 200 yards. He was lying down. And that's yeah. where the dog, dogs jump him actually the first time, or he jump up because he hear us. And then he got on here, and the dogs cornered him here, and he finished him off here. Yeah, I was just, I, I still just think it's the coolest sound. When, <laughs> you know, these guys are tough, and I mean, I couldn't believe it. He went down and, and took off, and without these dogs, yeah, there's a big you know, help. They are a huge help, and, and then you start to hear them bay, and it's, you know, you know it's, it's a good thing. I, and I just get such a rush out of, you know, once you hear them, hear them start to bark, it's the run is on, you know, and. Uh, you run in there and, and make sure he's he's good and done. And uh, that's just... Vanessa, I think it's a good start, a good morning start, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well we've got done. a whole day ahead of us. You bet. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. Well done, lady. When we booked our hunt with Boot and Karen Nell, 
One of the first things they discussed with us was one of the schools in their concession and just how poor it really was and how desperately in need of school supplies they were. And they asked us if we could bring a few along. Well, you give Vanessa a mission and things really happen. She organized a fundraising drive at work. She got involved with Safari Club International Blue Bag Program. And she also got involved with our local Safari Club chapter. And what started as a few school supplies turned into 150 pounds. Let's take a look at the day we visited the school. You can explain. Okay. Um, through our Northern Alberta chapter of Safari Club International, um, they organized yeah, a just classroom. Slowly, just slowly. Okay. <laughs> they organized a classroom in Edmonton, Edmonton Christian School. These two classes, grade two and grade four, got all of this stuff for the, the kids here. So this is pictures of their class and the two classes. Okay. And there's the school supplies that they put together. Yeah, yeah. right here. Calgary, Alberta. Yes, I got it. You know, you might have Well, Vanessa, it was Africa everything you imagined it was going to be? That and more. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're just getting into it now, too, and we've, um, you know, we've experienced so much already, and I know there's more to come. Oh, yeah, no kidding. And it's, I, every, every corner I turn is a whole new adventure so far. Yeah. And I mean, I came here with you know, some preconceived notions for sure, and some of them turned out to be true, and a lot of them haven't. I've really learned a lot here, and really learned to appreciate this land a lot. Oh, yeah, it really is breathtaking. and just amazing. I mean, I, I'm all constantly at a loss for words. Here. <laughs> That's true. So am I, which is, is kind of rare. <laughs> but every corner you turn, there's something new and something you haven't seen before. There's, you know, plants and animals and bugs and everything. It's just, it's yeah. like being a kid again. Yeah, and I mean, you always have this preconceived notion from watching National Geographic, from watching other hunting shows that are portrayed in Africa. And, and you know, I, I'm glad to say it's not that way? Yeah, this was real hunting here. Um, we worked hard for the animals we got and we're still working hard for them. Um, they're wild. They're as wild as any North American animal you'll hunt and a lot of them are, are a lot wilder. <laughs> and you know we're doing a traditional hunt here too, shooting off sticks, stalking, um, which makes it that much more difficult and we did a lot of research. Uh, you know before we came here we knew basically what we wanted and yes. it took us a long time. We, Two years at Two years uh, of planning. at Safari Club International, we you know talked to many many African outfitters, and you know narrowed it down to a very small list, and finally narrowed it down to Boot and Karen. And I'm so glad we did. They've given us everything we've been looking for, and, and showed us so much more. Oh yeah, definitely. And um, you know, doing the research is really 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 important. I find, um, and uh, we had an idea of what kind of hunt we wanted, um, and I definitely wanted that traditional old-fashioned safari, intense, and I really wanted to experience, you know, Africa the way Capstick and Rurik wrote and yeah. Hemingway, and you know, th this gave me a bit of a taste. Yeah. I mean, I know there was a little bit more luxury involved, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it really has been spectacular yeah. so far. And I think that's important. Most people don't know what they want when they come, and you know, Africa is a huge continent, and there's many countries, and every country is so diverse that mm -hmm. you really need to know what you want. And you know, for us, free-range game was first and foremost, 
Uh, you know, like you say, getting that wild taste of Africa, living in the tents, um, you know, going out fly camping, things like that. And we really had to work hard to find someone that could meet all those needs, but yeah. we did. Yep. And, and I'm glad we did. And, you know, if, if you ever want to experience a, some real Africa, make sure you get a hold of Bootnail Hunting Safaris. We'll have all the contact information at the end of the program, or you can always find it online at theoutdoorquest.com. For more information on Bootnail Hunting Safaris, contact them at 264-62-561-480 or check them out online at namibiansafari.com. Outdoor Quest is brought to you by Alberta Conservation Association, conserving Alberta's wild side. Proas Hunting Apparel, serious huntwear for...